Before we get a new Apple product, we get an Apple Keynote. As technology advances and so many iPhones have been released, one thing still stays the same. Apple's captivating storytelling. So how does Apple do it? Year after year, they're still the best-selling phones, yet none of the features seem revolutionary. Why can't Samsung replicate the same experience? And most importantly, how do we get an audience to listen to anything we have to say? Apple has secrets that they use for their keynotes, and today we're going to uncover them all. If you want to know more, all you got to do is keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jade. I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur and digital strategist. Thank you so, so much for all the love on the recent videos. Last week, I did a kind of breakdown on Melanie Martinez's short film. And today we're gonna dive into Apple Keynotes. So if you're so far enjoying this video, make sure this video a like, because on this channel, we basically uncover marketing and psychology together. And I have a few businesses about social media and I work with brands. So I try to give as much value to you guys. So let me know how I can improve this channel and let me know if you like it by giving a like all right so as you can see we have a different little setup and um, I'm not really sure what to call this episode I've been basically making a series on this channel and I need help naming it why don't you guys comment below and choose the name of this show it'll be really helpful all right so back to Apple because y'all fuck I hate when I talk too long anyways so there are three main tactics that make an Apple keynote an Apple keynote the first one being the introduction Apple always opens up with a video and this video typically has nothing to do with the product it, it typically it never does typically the introduction video sets the mood it gets people curious of what's to come but they never dive into specs or anything technical so it's typically a lot of theory and speaking from my experience whenever i watch an apple video i'm like Damn. They're basically trying to show you the benefits versus the features. And I think that's so important. Apple is a company that is benefit driven. And what happens as a consumer is we pay attention to how we can apply it to our lives. And this is really, really smart because now what Apple has done is set it up. So we don't even care about the price because if we're just trying to find the fastest phone, there's a ton of them out there. But if we're trying to find the lifestyle, the brand, that is priceless. And that's why Apple's price tag is able to be so soaringly high. So now guys, we reached the part of video where we have to dive into a little bit of psychology research. So let me get my other coat. <clears throat> and we're back. The psychology lesson of the day is all about why do humans buy towards brand and status versus actual features? Why do humans feel the need to constantly upgrade their phone when their last one wasn't so bad? This is all about status and how our brain is motivated by. So a little history lesson. I'm going to dumb it down for you guys because I'm actually a high school dropout. I started my company about social media growth, so I can't really give you the technicals, but <laughs> what you need to know is when we were first evolving as humans back in the olden days, our brains were created to only look for two things, which is threats and rewards. So because of this, our brain makes really fast decisions. It's kind of like when you're brushing your teeth and you don't really have to think about it. So with that being said, whenever our brain sees threats or rewards, we're just going to act on it. So if humans see a reward, an opportunity to get better and more popular, we're going to act on it. So what Apple is doing by talking only about the benefits is making us just forget about the actual rational thoughts like i have a good enough phone i don't need a new one but because we want higher status you know always being new updated never feeling left out we are going to act on that reward so what happens is it might not be the most smartest financial decision but but throughout our human evolution we have to act on rewards or else we will never get better as a species it's like the exact same reason why we as this is the exact same reason why Christopher Columbus probably went out into the ocean to find new land because there was a new opportunity and he didn't really have to think about it. Like, yeah, you might die, but we need to act as humans to evolve because our brains are programmed to look for threats and rewards. Now back to the pre-scheduled message. All right, guys. So now number two, easy to understand speculations. So unlike Apple's competitors like Samsung, they do not want to give you too much data five times faster than before. Apple's not gonna sit down in a keynote and go one by one on the speculation. They're most likely just going to tell you that this phone is five times faster than the last one versus going into detail about 
the processing. And here's the thing, right? So this is what makes Apple so unique. Instead of also just saying five times faster, they're going to tell you how you can use it in your actual life. For example, five times faster so you can run better. And they have a really dramatic montage of someone running in the Olympics. It's going to make you feel powerful, bold, and successful because that's why you need Apple because it's five times faster and you can move five times faster in life. And they make that connection, which is very emotional and very captivating. They do that through visual storytelling. They're very, very good at making you think about what your life could look like. Again, going back to part one, they make you imagine, but they also back it up with the speculations, but still being general. And this is where we leave to our last thing that Apple does, which probably is the most important. So I'll be honest, guys, Apple doesn't really have like the most newest technology. Like, yeah, they have new updates, but we can all expect that the camera gets better and the phone gets faster. Like That's what we expect every year. So how is it that technology doesn't really advance, but it still sells out every single year? They make it feel groundbreaking and new when it's just actual little micro improvements. Before we get into the last part, I just want to quickly do a quick narrative to help you understand why I think Apple's so unique. I remember personally when I left high school, like I wished that the classrooms would be an Apple keynote. Like I think we all can really just hope that one day universities and schools can like teach ideas and concepts just like an Apple keynote. Like if I could learn g calculus, like this amazing storytelling, I would probably get a way better grade. Information is boring. And the only way humans pay attention is through story, which is why I want to share this message and hopefully inspire people who are teaching or in education or in any sort of field that you can take something boring as fuck and make it so captivating and make it powerful. What you need to be able to do is take an ordinary item, an idea, and make people imagine the possibilities you can do with it. It's just so crazy how Apple is almost childish in a way. They tap into your inner childhood. It's just like Melanie Martinez, which I did a video last week, which I'll link below, is they're taking concepts that are ordinary and making it extraordinary. And where I'm gonna lead to the last part, which is the suspense. I think Apple doesn't really talk, in the way they talk a lot, like it's an hour fucking keynote, but all they make you think about is, what can I do with this in my life? Apple makes you think. Apple makes you question yourself. They almost leave some parts blank so your mind can fill in the gaps. And that's why they don't overload you with speculations and benefits. They just want you to give enough information so you can fill in what you think. And I think these questions are what creates conversation in social media and why there's so much buzz. Because we're asking questions, we're also having conversations. When was the last time you asked your friend, hey, did you see the last Apple keynote? Like I got literally 20 texts from my friend saying, did you see the last Apple keynote? When something can make you question yourself, you're going to ask other people. And Apple brings people together. And I think they have, con it's really unique because people just talk about it and for the first time when our world is so segregated and there's so much horrible things going on we can come together and talk about something we have in common which is what the fuck is going on in apple keynote <laughs> and that brings people together it brings community and even if we disagree of what we like and what we dislike at least we can come together and have these open conversations and i'm that's why i'm so thankful that you here are watching this because i would never be able to get your attention if you didn't click something about apple right and i think that's so powerful so in a weird way if you're a creator or you want to start a business, uh, I know a lot of us want to do something crazy. You don't need to feel like you have to be superior. Just you are so much more valuable than you think. You can take these techniques and create something amazing. I think with these three things that Apple uses, we can build community and connection. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. All right, guys. So thank you so, so much for watching today's video. Now, before you leave, please, please, please comment below your thoughts. I actually generally want to know and I read every, every single damn comment. So comment, bitch. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment 
on this post to be featured in the next episode. And if you're here already and you wanted more advice on, hi, Jade, how can I make my videos or my YouTube channel an Apple Keynote? Well, good news for you. I have an exclusive messenger group where I give advice and feedback of how you can grow your brand and use marketing techniques like this to your social media. I will personally mentor you to be a boss at psychology and marketing put together. I still need a name for the show. So please let me know your thoughts. Catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.